Hey guys, Nate here again with the Volunteer Tech Vlog on the Live Sound 101 YouTube channel. Uh, again, just continuing uh, going through all the comments, pouring through all the comments I got from you. I've created a comment log here, a Google Doc, where I um, I keep track of them as they come in from all different places. So I get comments from Facebook, from Twitter, uh, from email. You can actually, there's ways you can find out my personal email address on the internet. Um, although... You know, email is okay if you want to ask me a question, but um, I get comments from, um, I, I prefer comments on communities and public things so that I can respond to you there and other people can also see it, if that makes any sense. So you, know, you can email me if you're savvy enough to look up what my email address is, but I, uh, I do prefer things like the Google Plus uh, Live Sound 101 community. That's a great place to ask a question. Uh, but yeah, I'm also on Facebook and Twitter. So just look up Live Sound 101 or look up Big Nate 84. You'll find me. I'm hanging out there. So um, in an effort to respond to everybody that uh, creates a comment, I've, like I said, created this comment log. I'm making my way through it. Um, this next comment is uh, was was on August 11th, 2015 from Strobe Light Audio. Um, and this is on YouTube, and he's commenting on the three ways to create signal flow diagrams. And he says, yep, your Google Sheets is awful. <laughs> How about draw.io, which can save to Google Drive? So um, I made a video called um, Three Ways to Create Signal Flow Diagrams. And basically, I, I outlined like the, the industry standard. So for work, I create... Uh, signal flow diagrams. I do this all day every day. I've been doing this since like 2007 um, So I I have a I think like a system designer and I think like somebody who puts the systems down on paper And I have this mindset of how can I document something so that people can get the information they need to build the system So it's kind of like the blueprint guy who makes makes the the, the drawings that other people build from that's kind of where I have a lot of professional experience. Even though I'm a volunteer for the church, my day job uh, is is is, uh, is in the commercial integration world and in, in the in the system design world. So I went over the three things. I went over um, AutoCAD, Visio, and then which AutoCAD is like the industry standard. Visio is is also a popular one that a lot of people use, but not as popular as AutoCAD. Um, and then there's Google Sheets, which is just a spreadsheet. It's like Excel. And really, all you're, a lot of times, all you're doing is mapping inputs and outputs. So if you really want a bare-bones, free, simple solution that's easily shareable, you know, Google Sheets is a great way to go. If you just want to flip open your phone and start typing stuff in and mapping things out, you can do it in Google Sheets. It's not as elegant. It's not as pretty. Uh, it doesn't look as nice, but hey, it gets the job done. Um, and it's free. You know, Visio costs a little bit of money. Um, AutoCAD costs a lot of bit of money and it takes a big investment of time and resources to get AutoCAD up and running. So anyway, th that's why I went with those three ways. But uh, Strobe Light Audio is, is telling me my sheets is awful. My feelings are hurt. Why do you have to hurt my feelings? Tell me my Google Sheets. But no, I appreciate the, um, the info. So uh, I will look into draw.io. I have not messed around with draw.io. I'm not sure. If it's any good, but I will definitely look into it. And if it can save to Google Drive, that's a plus. So that that might be that might be a little bit better than a Google Sheet. I'll have to uh, take a look at it. Next comment from uh, let's see, this is on August sixteenth, twenty fifteen. So we're getting more more current. Um, this is from Kaj McBeth on YouTube, and he is commenting on the Live Sound One Hundred and One Lingo and Jargon video. He says, "I'm only on the second video, and these are so immensely helpful." Thank you, Nate. Well, thank you very much, Kaj. I uh, I really appreciate that. I'm, I'm trying to, what I'm trying to do with the Live Sound 101 is is really think through, think back to when I knew nothing about Live Sound or, or audio video technology and try to explain some of these things that um, you may not be able to find in a, in a video that's out there on, on the web somewhere. Um, so I'm really, I'm really, the whole purpose of this is to create content that can take somebody from zero to live sound person. Like somebody that has no experience, that is eager and wants to learn. They're faithful, available, teachable. You have those characteristics, you can do this. You just got to be dedicated to it and dedicated to learning. 
So I uh, really appreciate the uh, the feedback there that these are immensely helpful. So gives me <laughs> gives me encouragement to uh, to keep going. Another comment on August 21st, 2015, again from Kaj Macbeth via YouTube, and he's commenting on Live Sound 101, Community Comments and Questions Answered. So uh, that, that was uh, part eight of the Live Sound 101 video series, uh, which I will, will be continuing uh, eventually. He says, hey Nate, I've got a question. What are the best tools to use software-wise when drawing block or stage plots? Are there any specific CAD softwares uh, or CAD software uh, for for this that are commonly used. Thanks a bunch. So, you know, he's asking about when drawing block or stage plots. So, I mean, I, I'm I'm thinking he mean what he's intending to ask is about um, drawing block diagrams or stage plots. Uh, there's specific CAD software. So you can go back and check out my three ways to create signal flow. Uh, diagrams. Um, I think I already shared that link with you, Kaj. Um, that's one way to do it. Now, there, those are just the first three that like came to mind as the most popular or common common ones for me. But I, I could probably expand that into like ten different ways to document these things because there's there's many ways you can do it. Now, when you start doing stage plots, um, if you can get architecturals of your building, that's that's the first place to start is to ask ask people. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure if you're doing this for church or for what, but if you can get a floor plan or a ceiling plan or both, uh, for the building that you're working in, that is the best place to start. Cause that's going to save you a lot of time. I mean, if you don't know the actual dimensions, I guess it depends on what you're really trying to do. If you just need, if you need to actually draw a two scale stage diagram so you can show physically everything to scale and shift things around and, you know, might want to have the drum platform here and keyboard over here and piano here and you want to kind of do this design ahead of time, it might help to have everything to scale, but maybe you don't need something to scale. Maybe you can just do a quick little sketch. So that's also part of this is trying to figure out, you know, what is the least amount of uh, work to get the job done and accomplish what you're trying to do with these diagrams. So anyway, hope that hope that helps, but definitely check out the three ways to create signal flow diagrams. Um, next question was on August 25th, 2015 from Boris Chang. This is on YouTube uh, on the Live Sound 101 lingo and jargon video. Good, ta good content, but dude, please cut out the video game music droning in the background. It is distracting and serves no purpose for any for an informational video like this. Boris, I have heard you loud and clear. The first few videos I put background music in just because that was my um, my typical workflow for creating Big Nate 84 videos. I like to incorporate music. Um, I've learned a lot about producing videos for YouTube um, and I've gotten a lot of feedback from people. And so I have taken out, <laughs> don't worry, moving forward I've taken out the background music. So uh, no worry, appreciate, appreciate the comment. Uh, always, always enjoy getting feedback, whether it's critical or, or you know, positive, whether it's you know, negative or positive. I do appreciate the feedback. I try to, uh, I think I have a pretty thick skin, and I, I try to take everything at face value. And really, even if it's a you know negative comment that could be, be perceived as hurtful or whatever, I try to look for the positives to pull out of that because a lot of times there actually is some constructive criticism, um, even in like a, a highly negative comment. So Boris, thanks for thanks for chiming in. Appreciate it. Let's see, coming up on the nine minute mark. I better pause this video for one moment. And I'm back again. Okay, on August 29th, 2015, Jim Fegger on Facebook uh, commented about the uh, Live Sound 101 video series. So he says, I am but the self-appointed sound guy for our little five, sometimes six-piece band. I just want us to sound the best we can before an audience. I also will do, be doing some solo recording at home uh, with me playing multiple instruments, mainly so I can know our songs more thoroughly. Honestly, I'm definitely in my infancy at doing this sort of thing, but it's so much fun. Great. So, so Jim's chiming in here. He's got a band, and he's the uh, the self-appointed sound guy. Which, if you play in a band, hey, somebody's got to, you know, hit the controls during rehearsal. You know, you don't just show up and, uh, you know, have a professional sound guy, you know, uh, on a Saturday morning jam session, right? Somebody's got to 
figure out how to do it. That's honestly, that's how I, I really got started was, uh, you know, I, I played guitar and then we had a band with, uh, <laughs> with a drummer and three guitar players. So I learned how to play bass because that's, that's typically how bass players are birthed or come into this world is because they, they really want to play guitar, but they know the band rather than having three guitars and a drummer, they should probably have a bass guitar, two guitars and a drummer. So I learned how to play bass and then we were all going through this little four channel like Radio Shack mixer. And I was the guy that sat by the controls and put up the volumes until, you know, just did some rough mixing so we could hear everybody equally. And then I became a sound. So at the age of like, I don't know, 14, 15 years old, I was messing around with this stuff. And uh, I was the self appointed sound guy. So I can relate to you. Years and years ago, I was in that same exact position, but it was so much fun. It was like, it was, it was a blast just to be able to, to do that and to, to mix and to record. And I was, I was figuring out ways to, man, at the time I was recording to like a cassette tape. Uh, and then I had like a little, a little computer and I downloaded this like free software called N track studio. I don't know if anybody remembers N track studio, but I would record, uh, to the, to the, to end track studio and just like you Jim I would um, I would record all the parts so I'd record uh, bass I would record guitar I would record uh, vocals and then go back and do va backup vocals and um, so that was that was pretty cool um, let's see so let's see what where did I go so you're definitely in your infancy at doing this sort of thing with someone. So yeah, there's no, not really a question there, Jim, but definitely appreciate you um, you taking the time to uh, to mention that. Um, let's see, August 29th, 2015. Okay, this is uh, this is another one from from Jim, and let's see, he's saying this is on Facebook. And this is also about the Live Sound 101 video shoot. I think these were actually messages I got for him, like private messages on the Big Nate 84 Facebook page. So he says, Nate, I just watched your Live Sound 101 video videos from a few years back for the first time. Thank you for that great foundational info that is still useful and relevant today, especially the universal truth of doing the best you can with what you have and keeping an open mind. So, uh, yeah, that's that's... You know, I'm really glad I made that video. I was on the fence of whether I should, you know, make a video of, about that type of thing, doing the best you can with what you have. But that is such, um, everybody likes to talk about like super new fancy gear and all this stuff that you have. And, um, depending on what you have access to and what your budget is, you might not have all the latest and greatest fanciest gear. And you might just have to do the best you can with what you've got on hand. Like, like I said, when I first started, we were using like a, you know, a crappy little four channel Radio Shack mixer, right? And we were probably putting the wrong type of signals in there. We were probably doing all kinds of stuff completely wrong, but we were having a blast just being able to mix our little jam sessions. And so, um, yeah, keep an open mind, learn all you can and, and do the best you can with what you, ha what you have. Okay. Next one. Uh, thanks. Thanks for the, uh, the comments, Jim. Appreciate that. Next one is August 31st, 2015. This is from my lamp databases on YouTube, and he uh, he or she is commenting on the Live Sound 101 introduction video. That is exactly to the letter how I went into audio engineering. So funny how you actually uh, exactly described me. Thanks for taking your time to teach. So, uh, yep, another uh, yet another case of of somebody who became the Live Sound guy. And uh, that's that's how it happens. You just uh, you do it once, and you try to figure it out, and then um, before you know it, you are dubbed the the live sound person. All right, I am making my way through all these comments. I think that that is it. The next one is from Carol on Facebook, and she's commenting on wanted for new recruits. And so she says she just signed up to do this at a little church in Carver. Sure do wish I could. Be doing it with you, Nate. That would be an exciting adventure. Thus far, this little church is just looking to have words typed in for the screen. I asked about colors and backgrounds and have been given permission to experiment away. So if you have any tips or advice you'd like to share, Nate, uh, I'd be most grateful. I'd be happy to come to you for coaching if that's a possibility. 
rejoicing with you at your leadership in this ministry. So Carol is somebody I know personally. She used to attend our church and she's since relocated. And it sounds like she's um, getting involved with the, the media and technical arts at her local church, which, which sounds like a pretty small community. But um, just wanted to say good for you, Carol, for getting involved. And um, I did make a whole separate video um, for Carol. Uh, so you can look that one up. It's it's the first of my video lessons. And um, I think it's called something like, uh, oh, geez, it's called like text on screen tips for Carol, something like that. So I'll put a link in this video. But um, that's that's it. I made it through all the comments. And uh, that was my goal for this week was to address everybody who's commented so far. And moving forward, when new comments come in from all different places, I want to be able to respond and, and keep the discussion going. So uh, anyway, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to, to weigh in. Uh, my name is Nate with the Volunteer Tech Vlog, uh, hosted on the Live Sound 101 YouTube channel. I also go by Big Nate 84 That's my main channel. Uh, thank you for, for watching, and I hope this has encouraged you or helped you. Uh, feel free to weigh in with any thoughts, comments, questions. I would love to hear from you. Have a great day.